Hello, Anselm Griffin here again with another YouTube tutorial featuring MATLAB and a well-worn example at this stage, solving second order differential equations. And I'm going to try and go as slowly as I can today so students can get the best possible um, information from myself. So I have this book here, Introduction to Programming and Numerical Methods, and 8.5.1, I've taken, we're going to solve just where my mouse is there, that differential equation. Now, the author gives it here, but I'm going to try and explain it in more detail and explain what's going on. So we have the 2y dt squared, the two initial values, y of 0 is 1 and y prime or dy dt at 0 is 0, and the t is going from naught to pi. And he doesn't say in what steps, by the way, but I'll talk about that later. So he uses Z, I, you'd use as in the notes, P dot. So Z is Z1 and Z2, which is Y and Y prime. Differentiate Z, you get Z prime. Differentiate Y, you get Y prime. And differentiate Y prime, you get Y double prime. For y prime, leave it alone. And for y double prime, slow down here a little bit. What are we going to put in here? Well, d2y dt squared plus y equals zero. When you bring the plus y across, you get minus y. So d2y dt squared equals minus y. So for y double prime, we're going to put in minus y. y prime is z2. And minus y is minus z1. Oh. Uh, we use p dot in the notes. He gives the notes or the code here, but we want to explain a bit better, I hope. What we do anything else? Just if we're having problems about breaking it down into um, to for sort of differential equations, we might just look at this. So most STEM students, engineering, physics, you know, math students, will be aware that acceleration can be written as d2s dt squared. So you could not solve that uh, using a numerical approximation method because why? It's a second order differential equation. So what do we do? Well, we know that you can write velocity as ds dt. And then acceleration can be written as one of two methods. You can say d2s dt squared dt dt squared, as we have done there, or we, for ds, we can put in v, and we get dv dt. So that's what I'm trying to get across. We have, rather than one second order, we have two first order differential equations. So you have to do that for every second order differential equation. If you had a third order differential equation, you'd have to break it down into three first order differential equations. That's just the way it works. Let's look at the code here. So CLC clears the command window. You can just see if we just type it here. The command window is empty. If I type whose, I've run this before so you can see the variables are there. What will be the purpose of clear all? Clear all type it down a sec. And now I just type who's again. And there's nothing. So clear all, clears the workspace. And if there was any figures open, close all would shut it down. But there are no figures at the moment. So my time span is from naught to pi. And I am going in steps of 0.02. So remember, the higher the order of the rung of cutting method, the smaller the step size you need. So one may argue that 0.02 might be small enough. Maybe I should go 0.01 or something like that. But I went with 0.02. And I know you can just see it down here. The time span is at 1 by 158. So between naught and pi, between naught and 3.14 radians, there's 158 steps. The two initial values are 1 and 0 as noted in the, in the uh, 
think there's a slight typo there. I'm just going to just remind us there. So y prime of zero is zero. So I'm going to just go back to there, just put that. That's OK. And so here we go. And this is the magic sauce. So we use the MATLAB command ODE45. There are three things to supply to it. There's the function, which we'll look at in a second. That's the, the nitty gritty of what's going on. The time span, which we get from there, not the pi and slips of point two, two. And y is zero, the two initial values. And why are there two initial values? Because it's a second order differential equation. So you need the initial value for y and the initial value for y prime. Funk three, I've written the function here in a separate script. Everything has to be the same. Sorry for jumping now about this. That's F U N C three. So function space P dot. If you are using the book, you probably say Z dot, but the notes use P dot. So function three, your letter lowercase with lowercase, uppercase with uppercase, and also the file or the script must also be named the same. So the function there is func3, so you have to save it as func3. And can I just say uppercase with uppercase, lowercase with lowercase, and with all MATLAB names, no spaces in the file name. It just will not work. So I pre-allocate here. There's no need to do this. Um, I will end up with one uh, p dot r z dot whatever you want to call it. It's 158 zeros. You can just see it down there. But now that wouldn't really matter. But if you are, if you had a very small step size, say 0 0.001, uh, you might end up. What wrong with that? Be that might be you know 1500. That would be around 3000. But if you had 30,000, you might want to pre-allocate it so that you reserved a contiguous space in memory in RAM with zeros. Why would you want to do that? Because it will execute much more quickly if the RAM is contiguous. The initial value for P.1 is Y2, and the initial value for P.2 is minus Y1. And I've heavily commented it here. So P.1 is the second value there. Remember the zero and p dot two. That's that's t two y dt squared. That equals minus y, and the initial value for minus y would be minus y with the first placeholder, and that would be one there. Okay. Go back to here. So. When line six executes, we get two arrays are returned. T will be a one by 158. Why? Because there's 158 slots. The time span back up here is not 158 in effect. And here, X, you can just see it uh, here, would be 158 by two. So you would have the first column is a numerical solution for uh, y prime. In other words, y. So when you int numerically integrate y prime, you get y. So x, explain this now in a second, but the first column in x is y, and the second column in x is y prime because you've numerically integrated y double prime and when you numerically integrate y double prime you get y prime so here we're going to on line 11 we're going to plot t x colon all the rows just put that in left that out there all the rows column one. And while I mash it down here, I know I'm jumping a little bit, but when I think about it, oh, 
on the rows two. So going back to line 11, we're plotting on the x-axis t, that's um, not to, or one to 158, and all the values in all the rows in column one, hold on, we'll keep the same graph. We put in the title, yeah. And then the next plot we do on the same figure is all the rows in X in column two, which is the numerical integration of Y double prime, and the numerical integration of Y double prime is Y prime, in other words, uh, dy dt. Um, we put that on, we have a second title there. We put on an X label. Remember, you have to label the X axis and the Y axis as radians. Y label, numerical approximation. I couldn't think of a better Y label and hold off. And just one other thing, a lot of students spell X label, L-A-B-L-E, but it's L-A-B-E-L, that comes to mind a lot. So let's just run that. And there's our graph. Now, just one thing, I had two titles here, but the second title has overwritten the first. That's the only problem with that. There is a way around that, but I think we we'll leave that for the moment. We've done the main thing, and that's to solve a second order differential equation. Okay, so hope that helps a little, and thanks very much for listening.